Good evening. My name's Paul Webb, and I help managing directors sleep at night. I provide big company controls for SMEs. All this is very relevant. And I work as a part-time finance director and a freelance financial controller. How many people here have got a good strap line that they know has brought them business? Or helped bring them business? Sev is nodding. Okay, well that big company controls for SMEs. I had one client tell me 15 years ago that that was one thing I said that helped cement them as a client. That brought in £150,000 worth of income over 10 years. 15,000 a year on average. And last April, I got a new client. And I'm sitting with the director before he signed the contract and he said, I like that strappy line you've got, Paul. Large company controls for SMEs. That's what we need. I started working with him and he kept telling me that before I'd arrived, he couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> they got big contracts, big projects going on, and they didn't know how to account for the profit because they were getting subcontractor sub costs in different periods than the revenue, and the revenue wasn't being apportioned correctly over the periods, and it was all a mess. They didn't know their true profitability. Okay, that's a bit about me, and it is relevant. I've been self-employed for 21 years. I get virtually all my work from networking. And I think it'd be useful if I shared a few experiences and a few tips of what I think works and brings in business from networking. So would that be a good use of our time? Yes. Okay. Now Sarah mentioned earlier how long it takes when people go on a website before they switch off. You've got to engage them. Can anybody remember what she said? It was one of the early slides. Six or seven yeah, yeah. She said six to eight seconds. And how long do you think it takes before somebody meets you and decides whether they want to do business with you or not? 15 seconds, that's one guess. Well, it's also six to eight seconds because I've got on my slide seven seconds on my next slide. So how many people around this table have a second second, a seven second strategy about what they're going to say? Because that's all you get. Well, my strategy number one is Sarah's done me an excellent website and I got a raft, a whole lot of excellent testimonials. So before I meet somebody, I say, I'll tell you what, before I come in to meet you, why don't you check out my website? There's quite a few testimonials on there. Now, doesn't that make the seven seconds easy because I don't have to sell myself? <coughs> They look at the website, the website impresses them, the testimonials impress them, and all I've got to do is come along and appear to be reasonably smart, reasonably personable, the sort of person they think they can work with, and I've got seven seconds. Anybody know what we should do in that seven seconds introduction? Well, let me give you an example. I qualified as a, an accountant about 38 years ago. I used to be very proud of that. And I used to go to parties and networking events, and people would say, what do you do? I <laughs> should say, I'm an accountant. <laughs> and guess what? I could clear the room in no time at all. People were climbing out the windows. <laughs> Yeah, just being John left, yeah? Now, the perception of accountants isn't very good. I mean, John Cleese started this. Does anybody know what is an accountant's favoured form of birth control? Their personality. 
Now, that's what I'm up against. So when I say I'm an accountant, everybody just thinks, oh my God, get me out of here, I've got the short straw. But what's relevant, I heard a great presentation once about this seven second uh, introduction, this seven seconds strategy. And this guy said, I went to a, a networking event, there was a dinner, it was a dinner dance, I sat down next to a complete stranger, and I said, hello, what do you do? And he said, I'm an accountant. <laughs> and the guy said, oh, oh my God, I've got the short straw again. I'm in for a really boring evening. And then he says, but the guy was really interesting. And it turns out he saved people, many people, tens of thousands of pounds in taxation. And he got clients ranging from archbishops to prostitutes. Anyway, at the end of the evening, he gave the guy a bit of advice and he says, why don't you introduce yourself when somebody says, what do you do for your business? What's your business? Why don't you say, I save people a lot of money and my clients range from archbishops to prostitutes. <laughs> now, would you be interested in talking to that guy or would you rather talk to the guy who says, I'm an accountant? The idea is we get a, co a, co a communication going, we get a, a, a chat, we, we start engaging with people. What we have to do is get them to think, how do you do that? That's why when I meet people and they say, what do you do? I say, I help managing directors sleep at night. And they might think or say, how do you do that? I provide big company controls for SMEs. Ah. And how do you do that? Well, I work as a part-time finance director and freelance financial controller. At least I've got them engaged. At least I've got them talking. And if I'm thinking of trying to sell them a book, this is my personal development book. Most of you are aware of it. Quite a few have read it, Buddha Late Than Never. I'll say, I'm also an author. Now, would you like me to talk about the latest accounting standards or shall I tell you about the book that I wrote? <laughs> and, and they usually smile, usually laugh. And guess what they, they ask for, yeah? Right, I didn't know Sarah was gonna say that about the seven seconds, but she's done a great job for me with her website. That has helped me close business. And all I'm gonna talk about in tips now is about networking skills and what's worked for me. And groups like this have helped me a great deal. And my friend here, Winnie. Now Winnie is a great networker you can tell from his badges. He hates BMWs and he loves Mercs. He hates bitches, moaners and whingers and he loves people who are motivated, enthusiastic, resourceful, committed and successful. Now, because he's so popular, he gets invited to loads of parties. He's also a great socialiser. Have any of you ever been to a uh, bring a bottle party. <laughs> one or two people nodding, one or two people chuckling. You've had some experiences. Well, Winnie often goes to a bring a bottle party. And guess what? He always provides a gift, some goodies, some nibbles, maybe some chocolates. He also, as well, always provides some wine. Now, what he does, he's a natural giver. He's very generous <coughs> and he always turns up with more food and more drink than he needs personally. And if everybody does that in the party, the party goes with a real swing, doesn't it? Everybody has a great time. But sometimes you get somebody like his friend Rue. Now, Rue didn't actually get an invite, but he was down in the pub, he heard about the party. And he comes along later and he actually brings with him some people he's met in the pub, some <laughs> strangers. Okay, so guess what? They turn up at the party and they don't bring any wine, they don't bring anything to drink, they don't bring anything to eat, but they just get stuck into everybody else's wine and, and food. And before long, the party's run out. What happens to the party? 
it bombs, doesn't it? It goes flat. Well, you might be wondering where I'm going with this. Isn't this bring a bottle party a bit like a referral group? Yeah? Now, I, in 2003, I met Sarah. We both started going to the world's largest referral group called BNI. Uh, and it worked for us. Fantastic. In fact, Sarah gave me one referral that bought in £72,000 worth of income. So that's why she's such a good friend. <laughs> and I do value her friendship very much. 72 grand's worth here, yeah, of friendship. <coughs> but what impressed me about that group, and I was Buddhist then, and the Buddha actually said about the law of karma, he said, giving creates the causes for future wealth. And when I got to this BNI, I heard this, our philosophy is givers gain. People who give, gain. I thought that's bang in line with my own values and beliefs and philosophies. And it works. If everybody brings referrals and visitors to the group and the group keeps growing and everybody's generous, there's more wealth generated. So at the top there, I've got giving creates the causes for future wealth. I've talked about that seven second presentation. How many people have got a good elevator pitch? And I'm going to pick on accountants again. Uh, it's quite relevant. What goes into a good 60 second pitch about your business? First of all, the introduction. I help manage your director sleep at night. I work as a freelance financial controller, part-time finance director. And then we require either great achievements or alternatively, <coughs> a USP, something that's truly unique. And every time I see accountancy firms, I see the same sign. Chartered accountants and business advisors. Are they setting themselves apart from their competitors? They're all saying the same thing, aren't they? I can actually say I've recently won the 2018 UK Management Advisory Firm of the Year. Is that truly unique? Is that setting me apart from my competitors? Is that an achievement? And finally, the strap line. There are no works, because people have said they've used me on the basis of it. <coughs> Big company controls for SMEs. That's the 60 seconds. The founder of the world's biggest referral organisation, BNI, says it's visibility plus credibility that equals profitability. You've got seven seconds before people decide whether they're going to do business with you. People need to know, like and trust you. Know, well that's the visibility, isn't it? Even if you're the best in the world at what you do, got the best service or product, if nobody knows you exist or your products exist, you're not going to sell anything. You won't get any business. Credibility, how do they know you're good? Mention those awards, mention what makes you unique. Get testimonials on your website from all your clients. <coughs> if we want more wealth, if we want more profitability, oh and by the way on that no like and trust, that has, is valid, I prefer respect and trust. Once you've got, lost trust, it's a bit like finding your partner in bed with somebody else. You can try and forgive, you can try and patch things up, stay together for the kids or for financial reasons. Once the trust has gone, it's gone, hasn't it? In business, if somebody lets you down, if somebody lies to you, the trust has gone. So I prefer respect and trust underpinned by honesty, loyalty, and professional competence. 
Now, few want as business people more wealth, more profitability. You've got to work on these things. Your seven second presentation, your 60 second presentation, giving, and I would say unconditionally, it's got to be the right mindset. You've got to be visible and know how to improve your marketing. And Sarah can help with that. How to improve your credibility. That will lead to greater profitability. Thank you very much.